this episode of The Excursion, part one of a two-part journey through beautiful Harris County, Georgia. From farming and cooking challenges to exploring the hills and dales of this gorgeous and historic region of America, let's get started. There are many who have never realized that West Georgia was loaded with mountain views like this. Remote lakeside gems like this. A variety of dining options and even a world-class resort featuring the world's largest man-made white sand beach. From farms full of friendly animals to an actual farmhouse of home-cooked cuisine, Harris County, Georgia is a region of America that offers a diverse array of eateries and adventure. Harris County is diverse enough that you can come and stay for the weekend, hit the beach, come up and hike in the mountain. It's a great family environment too because there are things to do with the kids. You can take a short hike, you can take a long hike, you can get in your car and you can drive 20 minutes and be in another part of the county and go do something else over on the lakeside. It's a diverse opportunity for whatever your taste is. Home base for this excursion is one that offers gorgeous views and comfortable quarters. The Mountaintop Inn and Resort definitely delivered for us. We have one of the most unique properties around because we are situated in the middle of a state forest. We're actually a place that you can come and stay rather than just go hiking for the day. You can come here with your family, your friends, you can have events. We have in rooms on property. We also have lodge rooms down the road. Everything has its own unique perspective. The cabins are roomy, the views are breathtaking, and the hospitality is top notch. Everything here is for outdoor activities, getting back to nature, connecting. And that's what Harris County is all about. Why do you love it here? I love it here because it has a small town feel, but it's really close to everything. So within 30 minutes, you can be in Columbus, 45 minutes to an hour, you can be in Atlanta, but you can also come here and just disconnect. Well rested and ready for action, the crew and I were excited to begin. Stop one for this Harris County excursion is one with presidential approval. Welcome to FDR State Park, the largest state park in Georgia. This is one of the most beautiful places you'll see in the state of Georgia. The view that you get here and the atmosphere, it's hard to believe this is in the central part of the state. You'll get the North Georgia feel and what I meet guests from Florida, I always tell them this is the first mountain you get to. And when you get here to the top, this is a very rewarding view for drivers and hikers alike. When you come up here, you see why President Roosevelt decided to make Georgia his home. It's peaceful. You get some of the great views, and the people here are very friendly. And once you come here, it's hard to leave. As you are driving, biking, or hiking the colorful roads and trails scattered all around the over 9,000 acres of protected land, you'll soon realize that you may need more than one day to truly discover everything this destination has to offer. Overnight accommodations that we offer at the park is cottages, campsites, group camps, pioneer sites, backcountry campsites if you want to hike on the trail and stay overnight. FDR State Park has a lot of hiking trails and uh, not a whole lot of traffic. We just talked to someone a few minutes ago and they talked about how peaceful and how quiet it is here up on top of the mountain. When we return, I'm challenged with an unexpected chicken rotating adventure. I'll explain later. Let's now head down the road where a few curious animals and their fearless leader await our arrival and have a unique excursion challenge ready and waiting. Farming these days is a mix of ancient techniques and modern day science. Research and technology have made many jobs easier and more efficient through the years, 
but many have also learned that it's beneficial to better appreciate the land itself. Turntime Farms is a pasture-centered operation that aims to heal while at the same time produce clean food available to the entire region. The mission here is we want to provide locally sourced, regeneratively raised meat, and so we do uh, grass-fed beef, pastured pork, we do pastured turkey, eggs, and chicken. The goal here is to provide a healthy, well-raised meat while also regenerating the land and being good stewards of both the land and the animals. Daniel Horde operates everything on the farm using nature as a guide. This means that cows graze on fresh pasture every day. The chickens are able to forage and scratch, sanitizing those pastures left in the bovine wake. It means the pigs live in wooded areas where they have the freedom to root and graze. It's a lot of work to run a farm this way and requires true passion. The rotation. What I've noticed, there's greener spots in some areas. Tell me how that all works. That's right. So everything on our farm is based on a rotation. Nothing stays in the same place for very long. Some things get moved every day like our cows and our young chickens. Uh, some things every three to four days. We use no synthetic fertilizers or pesticides on the farm so our only source of fertility is from our animals. We move everything because we don't want the fertility to stay in one place. We need to move it around. So the areas you talk about David are places that our chickens were recently. So they leave, they go there, they leave nitrogen on the ground. As soon as we get a good rain which we've just gotten, those areas will immediately green up and will outperform the areas that haven't received that fertility as, as recently. And there's also there's a role for the cows, there's a role for the goats that follow. That's right. We send our cows through first in a rotation into a pasture. We let them have, because they are the, the meat producing animal that we're using, we want them to have best pick of the forage. But what they leave behind is often undesirable things like weeds, but goats love them. So the goats come behind and since we use no herbicides to kill weeds on the farm, those goats are how we keep those weeds in check. They come behind and they browse and eat the weeds, eat the leaves off of the plants and break the photosynthesis cycle down, which over time keeps the weeds, sometimes puts them out of commission altogether or just keeps them in a relative check so they don't take over our pastures. And you guys are some Georgia Tech educated folks. I have a degree from there, but I decided to put it to work here on the farm. And so a lot of farming takes a lot of engineering. A lot of our pens or mobile coops like we saw on the egg layers back there, uh, those aren't things you can pick up off the shelf. Those are things we have to invent or build that fit our farm and our model. You have a store here people can come visit and you encourage that. Absolutely, so our model is really seeing it to understand it. What can people find in the store? We carry our own products, which is grass-fed beef, uh, pastured pork, pastured chicken, pastured turkey. Uh, we also carry eggs that are pastured and non-GMO raised. Then also we can support some of our other local farmers. We carry uh, some goat's milk soap. Uh, my wife is a potter. We carry her pottery in there. Pecan Point does a whole milk yogurt and a, a granola that we carry in the store. Uh, so our goal is not to work against other farmers in our community, but we want to work together and that's why we support and try to highlight them in our store as well. If you can get a group on, they kind of all uh, in unison. Now they're running for this. I don't know what they got. So turkeys don't rank very high on the intelligence level. Yeah. So sometimes they're more erratic and sporadic like this here. Um, but they're really social and they enjoy uh, visitors. And you can use they'll interact with you more, much more than the chicken will. Okay. Much more than the chicken. But they're not. Uh, they're not. Chickens are a lot smarter. Really? Yeah, chickens okay. are a lot smarter. I mean, I'm not saying a chicken is it's smart. smart. I just think it's smarter. Yeah. Smarter than yeah, smarter. these guys. But the smartest animal we have on the farm by far is the pigs. Okay. Pigs rank really high. Like if you look at a list, like they're yeah. like top five they're animals. Thinking. They're thinking and they're always like looking for a way out, looking for an escape, looking for like they're always plotting and see it. They're, they're funny, but they're wow. super fun too. A lot of social creatures. Now we've gone out, met some of the animals. Let's talk about the bulls you have out there. We raise here on the farm a South Pole breed. It's a breed developed in Fort Payne, Alabama in the 80s. So not every cow performs well on grass only. A lot of them need to be propped up with supplements or grain, and that's not our model here. So we develop and work through a breed, which is based on the South Pole uh, breed, that does well on grass only and can sustain the heat that we experience here, obviously, in the South. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you, thank you. We're and curious. Particularly the mamas right now, as since they're close to calving, yeah. you can start to see their maternal instincts kick in to where when they're not pregnant, they don't necessarily pay as so much attention. But the closer they get to calving, you can see their protective instincts start to heighten. They're starting to think, I, I need to protect what? And we're predators. We're predators, that's yeah. right. 
So our mission here is to provide local food. Uh, we don't ship, our model isn't to ship. It works for other farms, but for us, we want our customers to come to us and see the farm and understand it. We will do a local home delivery. And there's restaurants in the community that work with you. Not just because you're local, but because it's good. Yeah, absolutely. So we love to be at a family's dinner table. We think it's an important part of our model. We want it on our own table and we want it for there, but we love our restaurants. Uh, we love our restaurants because it allows a larger number of people to experience our product. It also oftentimes is prepared by a chef who really knows how to care for, particularly the grass-fed beef, which sometimes can be a little more tricky to cook than maybe what some people are used to from the grocery store. And so having a chef who handles it well, it highlights us well and we love to see our food on local restaurants tables. Cute watchdogs with their even cuter puppies are a great reason to visit Turn Time. So you met our large dogs in the field and then we've got Willow here who is our mama uh, of this group of puppies. So when we need to do replacement dogs or as our farm grows, we need maybe dogs that go with a new group. So we develop our own large guardian dogs here. And so back here at the stable, this is kind of where we raise our puppies. We have a group of goats that live here. We've got pigs, we've got chickens here. We kind of call it our training ground so that they're not out in an open field having to deal with predators at a young age. We grow them and mature them. Uh, so got it. Got yeah, that's what I was right? waiting on. Yeah, sorry. Hello, hello. And they're as sweet as can be. Even mom was very sweet, but if I roll around here at night. You roll around here at night or yeah, in the pasture in the dark, they're yeah. very, very instinctual to guard. All right, Daniel, I see a lot of chickens here. I see this cart and I see you're ready to work. Is this the challenge? This is the challenge. We're here. So part of our daily moves, like we've talked about, is uh, Every morning, our juvenile birds, which these are our meat birds, a freedom ranger they're called, they spend three weeks in a brooder. They'll spend two weeks in these mobile pens that have no bottom on them. We move them each morning so that they have fresh ground, fresh bugs to eat. We slip the cart up underneath the back, we walk around the front, and we drag it. The goal is to drag it uh, while avoiding the small birds, but not lifting it to where they can get out. And oh, so that's tricky. And if you mess up, it's bad news for the it's birds. It's bad news for the birds, uh, yes. You hear that, guys? I need you for this. They're not listening. I apologize in advance, fellas. Lift with the legs. You'll come straight up and just slowly, once you get moving, you'll start to feel. Oh, they're cooperating, okay. Watch out, guy in the back, move. There you go. And I see success from my end. All right. Good job, David. Yes, thank you, thank you. I think I'll All right, so tomorrow we'll maybe do all 15 uh, tomorrow? We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I might, uh, where are we going tomorrow? I think we're going uh, to the other side of Harris County, but I okay. might show up, I'll see. All right, perfect. Yeah, yeah. All chickens accounted for and ready for more. We journey a few miles down the road to Waverly Hall, where even more friendly goats were ready to perform for excursion challenge number two. These are the alpine goats of Simply Dutch Farm. They are loved, they are talented, and they are all responsible for producing an amazing line of milk, cheese, and soaps right here in Harris County, Georgia. We raise a select herd of purebred French mountain goats called Alpines from the Alps. They're all registered, they're all purebred. Uh, of course, they were imported years ago, so we call them American Alpines now. The milk that we get from them is the closest thing in the world to human mother's milk. And so when you drink it, if you're lactose intolerant or have any problems like that, you will not with this. You can raise just about any animal in the world on this milk and you'll find it a very cream, creamy, smooth milk. We have people who show goats professionally who come buy off of our, our stock and they take them to shows and stuff like that. Now we don't do that. Um, they're just dairy goats here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they, hey, I like the product. Yeah, they, they stand around and produce milk and eat. What are some of the challenges you have? I see you have a cat, I see you have some great Pyrenees out here yes, protecting the goats, I assume. Absolutely. So tell me about that setup. The great Pyrenees are naturally inclined to protect the goats. Now, you don't just go buy a great Pyrenees, throw them out with the goats and hope it all works out, because it won't. So you gotta train the dog. Once you get the dog trained up, they're amazing. They're amazing animals. When the tornado hit us, we used to live in a forest. 
All these trees were wiped out. We even had virgin forest on the back of our land, never touched by an ax, and the tornado took them all out. All those trees hit our fences, and our Great Pyrenees at the time, we had two. One was a small puppy, so she ran and hid. But the large Great Pyrenees who'd been guarding the herd for years rounded up all 50 goats, put them into a circle, and kept them there, wouldn't let them go anywhere, until we came out and we built a fence around them and protected them. So that's how they work for you. The Great Pyrenees actually works for the goats. They protect the goats. They don't work so much for the farmer. Visitors and school groups alike often make an appointment to visit the farm. Daniel and his wife Martha are fantastic hosts and along with the goats themselves make this experience a special one. Now I've had goat milk before but this time the taste was different from my past recollection. Oh it's very smooth. I love it. I yeah. was expecting some kind of sour Not at all. taste, no, but it's, no, no, it's no. great. Not if you do it right. You did it right. Oh, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> From the smooth and creamy milk to one of the many cheeses they make right here. This is chevray okay. with a secret blend of herbs that we like to do. Okay. Chevray is the French word for goats. This is beautiful. Okay, so that's our chevray. I can smell it. Mmm. It's so soft. Well, thank you for sharing your product, sharing your milk. Now we're going to do some uh, milking. Yep, we're going to feed the goats and get some milking done. All right. Are you ready? This should be interesting. All right. <laughs> this is Serenita. Serenita is a goat. This is what makes the flavor, too, what you feed them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Even when I plant out there into the fields, I mean, it just looks like grass to you, mm -hmm. but I've got like bird's foot trifoil. I try to plant legumes. So there's a lot of chemistry that goes into this and a lot of knowledge to make sure your milk is sweet and not that bitter. I always tell my wife it's a science and an art. Yeah. The science part is knowing how to do it. The art part is knowing how to bring it back. Right here, mm -hmm. and just kind of come up. Okay. okay, come on, under here, under here. Okay. Now okay. pinch, and then squeeze your fingers as you go down. Pinch tight and hold that. And then walk your fingers down, there you go. Your wrist should never move, there you go. Okay. Now release, more milk comes down, pinch it, and oh, walk it down. there we go. See? And then just release, more milk comes down, pinch it. And walk your fingers down like you're playing a musical instrument. There you go. Daniel, Martha, and these goats have survived tornadoes, damaging ones, and every other little curveball Mother Nature could offer, but they've survived and persevered. And in the end, it's a tasty product, raised right in these rolling hills of Harris County, Georgia. better way to end part one of this two-part exploration through Harris County, Georgia than in the kitchen of one of the region's most talked about restaurants. The farmhouse is an actual farmhouse. The chickens and guineas roam the property. The horses boast their natural beauty. You'll find artwork out back, the pumpkins in the patch, and so much more once you step inside. And before you hit the pies, there's much more to try. All kinds of activities going on here. A little hard to find. <laughs> Tell me about why you started this and why this location. The house is on our property. It was a caretaker's house with my husband's grandfather's country place. The house was empty. We were doing crafts in the 80s, so we opened a craft shop and mother said, I think I'll do something in the kitchen. And it quickly outgrew the craft end of the business. It was amazing. You've been here since 1981. You've been busy since 1981, we but not been, every day of the week. We only opened Friday and Saturday. We thought it would be a hobby. It turned into a job. Talk about all the things you can see when walking around the farmhouse. We do some tomatoes out of the garden and uh, cucumbers and then we also have a garden center where we sell flowers. Right now we're in the pumpkin season so we're doing hay rides and pumpkins. We also do field trips with schools and daycares. I love that. You never probably realized that your little arts and crafts would turn into this. Never. Hay rides and great food and people waiting to get in the door. That's right. 
we got the October issue of the Southern Living and my husband hid it from me because I was retiring that year and he decided that would be a special place to go the first time after we retired. So we get in the car and we travel towards Warm Springs and I said, oh, we're going to Warm Springs. He says, no. He said, I'm really not sure where we're going. Let me put it in the GPS. <laughs> So we drove around the little road up here and we thought, oh dear, is this, is this the right place to go? And we come on down here and we see the little, the little house. And when we walked in, the smell of the food, the aroma, oh, it was wonderful. And then we just came on in and it's been home ever since. As you sit there, enjoy the great home cooked meal. You look over and you see these rows of cake. You see chocolate cake, you see red velvet cake, coconut cake. Tell me about the appeal of these wonderful cakes. All of our cakes are from scratch. They are again mother's recipes that have been passed down from my grandmother friends and strategically placed them so you have to walk by them That's and fair. it's very tempting. Yeah. Cakes are a big calling card out here. This place, Harris County, is special to us in our lives from the very beginning to you know to the present time. We just, just feel like family here. So no better way to end part one of this Harris County excursion than powering down at our mountaintop inn and resort home base and watching the sun set over these West Georgia hills. That's all for this leg of the excursion. See you next time.